Hello and welcome back to another video. I recently made a video going over what I think Ash's ultimate team was and it did really well so thank you to anyone who has watched it. I wondered who else would be deserving of an ultimate team and the only option for me was Brock. This video is based strictly off the anime and not relevant to the games at all. Of course Brock has nowhere near as many Pokemon as Ash but he has appeared in the most episodes of any other character apart from Ash and the Rocket Trio so who better to talk about. Over the years Brock has only had 11 Pokemon in total, so it won't make it that hard to make a team of 6 for him. Brock's first Pokemon is of course, the first Pokemon we saw him have is Onix, which eventually evolved into Steelix. Brock received this Pokemon for his 10th birthday from his father Flint, and much like Ash's Pikachu, Brock's first ever Pokemon. Onix was always reliable for Brock in the original series, getting him out of many different jams and of course it was the first ever Pokemon to defeat Ash in an official battle against Ash's Pikachu, so just as they were starting out. Although being a former gym leader, Brock didn't actually battle that much in the original series, so his Onyx didn't get many chances to shine, which is a shame. And also its record includes a defeat to Meowth, but only because Meowth threw buckets of water on it. Brock returned to the gym in the Battle Frontier series and Onyx had evolved into a Steelix under his brother Forrest's care. It was a shame we didn't see Onyx evolve and that Brock wasn't there to witness it either. We don't really see much of Steelix again until the Sun and Moon series where Brock battles Kiawe and Brock whips out the Mega Evolution Stone and out comes Mega Steelix which was awesome. Brock's Mega Steelix defeats Kiawe's Turtonator and Brock wins the battle. Steelix will be a sure thing for Brock's ultimate 6 Pokemon. Next up is Brock's Krogunk. It was his standout Pokemon from Sinnoh. We all love its recurring gag of dragging Brock away from a woman and taking him to who knows where, but it, co it packs quite a lot of punches as well. Krogunk actually first appeared battling alongside Jesse, and it managed to rack her up some wins so you know it's strong when Team Rocket can even win in battle with it. But later on Brock came along and it seemed to share a bond with it straight away. It was a weird bond but a bond nonetheless. Brock entered Krogunk in the Heart Home Tag Battle Tournament and it also performed nicely there showing its strength by getting Brock and Holly all the way to the semi-finals, but they couldn't get past Ash and Paul. Brock seemed to enter Krogunk in a lot of competitions and tournaments. Another one was the Krogunk Pastoria Festival, where it got all the way to the final battle, but in the end got outdone by another. It shared a rivalry with a Toxicroak belonging to Team Galactic Saturn. Every time they saw each other, there would be a ruthless stare down followed by a battle. At the end of the Team Galactic arc, Krogunk finally got a win over Toxicroak, and it was well deserved. Krogunk is undoubtedly one of Brock's strongest Pokemon with many achievements and battles under its belt. It belongs in this team. The third spot on Brock's team is going to go to his Crobat. Brock caught Zubat really early on in the original series and he caught it off screen which was actually pretty strange. In Kanto and the Orange Islands Brock Zubat barely appeared at all. It didn't have any development or episodes dedicated to it. It was pretty forgotten. But that changed in Johto, the writers remembered Brock had a Zubat and decided to evolve it into a Golbat in a pretty cool evolution. While they were trapped in a castle, it really shows Brock's bond with his Zubat and the fact that Brock was able to hear his supersonic waves, something that was said no human should be able to hear. Later on in the Johto series, Brock's Golbat evolved into the brand new Johto Pokemon Crobat. It gained a lot of speed with its evolution, but unfortunately it never had any major battles to speak of which is wasted potential, but I do believe if it was to come back it could make a nice impact in a full battle. Brock didn't take Crobat to Hoenn or Sinnoh, but we did see it reappear again in Sun and Moon. It helped defeat Team Rocket. Through most of the series that's what Crobat was used for, just taking out Team Rocket's balloons, but I feel it really could have done some damage in battle given the chance. Next up is Brock's standout Pokemon from Hoenn, Marshtomp. Brock didn't battle much in the advanced generation, similar to the original series, so Marshtomp doesn't actually have big notable battles, it was mainly seen in practice battles or battles which help a certain character accomplish something, and of course Team Rocket. It evolved into Marshtomp in the Battle Frontier while having a battle against Ash's Groovile. Brock decided to enter a Pokemon contest randomly in one episode because of a female, of course. He entered Marshtomp in the battle round and it managed to take down an Absol, but then it failed to beat Maze Eevee in the final. Marshtomp was left at Pewter Gym while Brock travelled to Sinnoh. Despite its lack of battling and accomplishments, I think it deserves to be in this team and if Brock actually brought it back and trained it and battled with it, it could become a very powerful Swampert. 
Next up is another water title from Hoenn, Ludicolo. Brock caught it quite early on as a low tad. I actually really loved the episode that Brock caught it. He had a special bond with it because it was the odd one out. It struggled to use its water gun and lost focus quite a lot. And Brock being the caring breeder that he was decided to take it under his wing and try and train it to become a great Pokemon. And he did. It eventually evolved into Lombre and then he found a water stone which took it up to a Ludicolo. Of course being Ludicolo it had a fun personality and loved to dance all the time. It was a nice addition to Brock's team and something different to his usual rugged rough rock types. I apologise if I'm repeating myself too much but once again we barely saw Ludicolo battle which was a shame. Brock left it at the gym just before Sinnoh because of how much his brothers and sisters enjoyed playing around with it. Ludicolo would fit nicely into his team along with Marshtomp, especially if Brock planned on using a rain weather team. We don't know Ludicolo's ability but it could be Swift Swim which would put in some nice work for Brock in a rain team. So for the final spot on this team there is quite a few options, of course we could pick his famous Geodude, but Geodude was actually really bad for Brock, it lost to Pikachu in its first ever battle, and since then it hasn't really had any standout wins, I'm not sure it's even got one win in the entire Pokemon anime. Brock's Comfy, we haven't seen too much of it so I didn't want to include that, Brock's Sudowoodoo was in contention but I decided against it in the end, and then of course there is Chansey and Vulpix, both Pokemon that don't really battle. Chansey being more of a healer and Vulpix didn't win a single battle before he gave it back to Susie. So that leaves my final Pokemon, Fortress. Pineco was caught in the Johto series using one of Kurt's apricot Pokeballs. It seemed to have a really close bond with Brock, probably from exploding him one too many times. Geodude and Onyx didn't really get seen that much in Johto, so I felt Pineco was his standout po Pokemon for a while. It even evolved to help Brock from some Ursaring, which was a really cool evolution. After this it was seen from time to time but it didn't battle much. It had a really cool moment right at the start of the Hoenn series where Brock makes his first appearance telling Fortress to use Explosion to save Ash from a bunch of Talo. This moment is the main reason why he's on the team. Fortress Explosion! It's Brock. This is Brock? After hoeing much like the others, he left it behind for Sinnoh. So that is my six Pokemon for Brock's ultimate team. There wasn't much to choose from and a lot of them lacked battling, but I think it's still a cool team despite a few typings being the same. I'd love to see Brock in a 6 on 6 battle one day and this might be the team to use. What do you think of Brock's ultimate team? Let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you did enjoy and I'll see you next time.